everyone, Christina Warner here. Welcome to another monthly mail art video for SimonSysStamp.com. This month I'm going to be using the Festive Wreath stamp set from Avriel to create a festive holiday envelope. And I'm going to start out by stamping the large wreath shape in Versafine Onyx Black ink onto a white envelope. And this white envelope is a heavy, I think it's the ultra white or ultra brilliant white heavy envelope from Simon. I'll have it linked down below if you want to check this out, but it's a great envelope. Um, it's a little bit heavier weight and it's great if you want to color on top of your envelope. So I've stamped that down once and it's a good thing I was using my Misty tool because I didn't really press down the image enough and so I have gaps in my stamping. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up that stamp one more time and give it an, another shot. And I'm going to make sure I really walk my fingers over every single area of this wreath. So you'll notice that there's an area at the bottom of the wreath that has a gap and that's specifically been designed by the stamp designer so that you can put in different elements. There's a large bow in the stamp set if you wanted to create like a wreath where the bow is either hanging up or down either way or if you want to just complete it like I am you could use the three little berry stamp that's in the stamp set and just fill in that gap. So I didn't want to have a bow kind of coming into the center area because that's where I'm going to be putting the address. So I didn't want to have that taking, taking up any space, so I decided to just do the three berries. So now I'm going to do some really simple coloring with colored pencils. I'm using some Christmas Prismacolor color pencils and I'm just starting out with a nice red shade and then I'm going to bring in a brown. And I'm bringing in brown because when I... Well, this actually kind of goes back to um, when I co co color with Copics. When I color with Copics, I usually use a brown as my darkest shade for my reds. And that just kind of deepens the red shade and it doesn't look quite as stark. So I decided I would use a brown for this and it worked really, really well. So I just did like a, a small layer or a light layer of the red, added some brown, and then went back over it with that same red color just to kind of mix those colors all together. So now I'm going to bring in some different shades of green and um, I'm using kind of like this mid-tone olive green and I'm mostly adding it to the main sections of these, I guess they're um, pine needles or they could, they could possibly be um, like leaves as well, but I'm just adding them to the center areas and then I came in with a darker green and added those to the areas that would be the darkest or in shadow. So I'm <clears throat> excuse me, I'm coloring this as if the light is coming from the top. Um, so the shadows would be down inside where those, um, where the leaf shapes kind of gather. And then you'd have the lightest area right up at the top. I brought in like a nice yellow green uh, as my last shade. And I'm just having that go over the entire leaf shape. And that kind of blends all those colors and it also adds a little bit more of a glow. So that's my basic wreath shape. And I was thinking about just leaving it like this and addressing the envelope and calling it a day. And you definitely could. I think it would look really beautiful, just kept really simple like this. But like I showed you guys last month, I'm going to actually add in a dotted background in the background. So this is the large dot stencil from Simon. And I'm gonna bring in pumice stone distress ink. This is the same exact ink color that I used in last month. And I'm, I'm using it for the exact same reason. Um, if you guys remember last month, and I'll have a link up in the top corner if you want to check that video out, but if you remember, there was a lot of white space left on the envelope, and it didn't look finished. So I brought in this stencil and stenciled on some pumice stone ink, and it really kind of brought the entire envelope together. And just like it happened with last month, this month, I think this really finishes off the envelope too. It gives it just a little bit of design and decoration uh, on the outside edges of the wreath, but it doesn't distract away from the center of the wreath, which is where I'm putting the person's address. So this is uh, Tanya. She is lovingly allowing me to use her real address online. So I'm not like using this with, without permission. She did give me permission. And I'm using a pilot envelope addressing pen just to write her name and address on here pretty simply. And this is uh, one of the ways I really like to um, kind of make the em envelope special, but without having it be too fussy. Um, I'd like to have their first name, or you could even do uh, their first and last name, <clears throat> excuse me, in like a script type of style, or even like a cursive. And then I do the rest of their address just in all caps, and then I make the zip code a little bit bigger on the very last line.
So I'm going to erase all my pencil lines because I did pencil in her name just to make sure that's exactly where I wanted it. And then I put my address, my return address on the flap. This is just my PO box. And then I added a red stamp and I picked out this stamp in particular instead of maybe like a holiday postage stamp because I wanted it to be all red and I didn't want it to um, kind of pull focus from the wreath shape. So as a final step and just to add a little bit of uh, shimmer, I'm using a clear Wink of Stella glitter brush pen. I'm just adding that to the berries. You could definitely add it to the leaves or the pine needles as well, but I decided to just leave it on the berries. And that finishes the envelope for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is a great way to dress up your holiday envelopes. And there are so many lovely wreath stamp images available out right now. So if you wanted to change it up, uh, you could definitely do that. Thanks so much for watching. And I will catch you guys next month for another monthly mail art.